This is the Laron setup for demonstration. The Laron has a 25 foot power cord, which is 10 feet longer than the Veramat. The Hapco Laron has a solid milled aluminum frame with a lifetime warranty. The Veramat has a cast aluminum frame with a one year warranty. There is a two year warranty on your Laron except for the element. There are only two circuit boards in the Laron versus the Veramat's five circuit boards, which is much kinder to your wallet from a maintenance standpoint. Now let's get to the setup. Simply plug your machine into a 220 line. Be sure that the plug is wired correctly. The green and yellow striped wire is your ground or neutral wire. Be sure that your line cord is nothing thinner than a 12 gauge, preferably 10 gauge wire, and that you are not plugging into a line cord that is no longer than 100 feet, as this can cause power issues to the welder and heat guns, and it can burn out your elements as well. At the very bottom of the machine is a red knob, your power knob. Turn it clockwise to the on position. The round silver disc to the right of the power knob is your airflow gauge. Now the factory sets it at zero, which means it is running at 100% of airflow capacity. My advice, keep it there. Just above the power knob is your speed dial. It will give you an LED readout of the speed setting which you have chosen. If you have worked with automatic welders in the past, chances are likely you will run it anywhere from 11 to 15 feet per minute, maybe more, but let's not sacrifice quality welds for speed. To the right of the speed dial is your drive knob. Hand will make it move automatically regardless of whether the nozzle is engaged. Auto means the machine will move when the nozzle is engaged and then stop when it is pulled out. Off means no movement at all. The top switch is your heat switch. Push the arrows up or down to get your desired temperature depending on the material to be welded. It is usually somewhere between 900 and 1148 degrees. Turn the knob to on. The machine will take only about three minutes to heat up and you'll be ready to weld. Overlap your TPO and roll your Hapco Laron into position. The pressure wheel at the back of the machine where the weights are will be on the edge or left side of the top layer. With the toe of your boot, slide the silver ball to the right to set up your front guide wheel. We call this the pizza wheel. It will be on the right side of the top edge, actually resting on the bottom layer. Once these two wheels are lined up, your Laron will operate in a straight line down your seam. Reach between the right side of the Laron's body and the nozzle in its upright position and make a gentle pocket for the nozzle. Be careful as you'll be close to the hot nozzle. Then pull the black knob just below the heat gun to unlock the nozzle and slide it into position between the two layers of membrane and your machine will begin to move and weld. You will want to gently guide the machine if it goes slightly off track. Do not lift it. Just gently nudge it with your toe. When you come to the end of your seam, pull the heat gun nozzle out and slide it back to its locked position. It'll click into place. You always want to properly shut down your Hapco Laron just as you do your heat guns. Turn the heat switch to the off position. It was the last thing you turned on. The machine will quickly cool down approximately three minutes. Once the temperature reaches two to three hundred degrees, you can turn off the power button, the red knob, which was the first knob you turned on, and you can shut your machine down. This is a good practice to do with your Laron and your heat guns. The heat guns are more apt to cracking of an element if it's not cooled down first. And then also your crew will know that when the machine is completely off, no one will have likelihood of getting burned.